Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen, Lavender Clothesline, and today we have a hard goods haul. I know it's been a little while. I have been super busy with filming locations and just processing inventory. So today we're gonna do hard goods, like I said, and I'm gonna give you what information I have about the items, but as many times I say, I don't have a lot of information. So I go by my gut feeling when I'm in the stores, and today's haul is is a Goodwill haul. Now let me just say in my area the Goodwills are considered the Keystone locations. I think that's what they're considered in central Pennsylvania and south central. And as far as the last time I looked I think we have 40. Yep, four zero locations in the Goodwill um, area the goodwill what do i want to call this division i'm not even sure what it's called but you can google that keystone area goodwills and you can see all the locations of the goodwills when i pull up a map there's like a bunch of little red dots all over the place so i am on it i am always at some goodwill or another today's video is probably i'm gonna say one or two maybe even three locations some days i go from location to location and sometimes i just dig in my heel and do the shopping for like eight hours or six hours in one location. All right, so without further ado, I just cherry picked a few items I wanna talk about that I wanna show. I also showed on Instagram yesterday or this morning, losing track of my days, uh, vintage doll patterns, sewing patterns. So if you didn't get to see that great sale, that's over on my Instagram. I did pick up six or eight lots, I'm going to call it, of old uh, sewing patterns, and these two flew out the door. It was a lot of, I think, 20 and a lot of 19. Collectively, one buyer bought both, $178, and I paid $2.99 a lot. So the point I'm trying to make with all of this is not to brag or not to say, hey, look at all the money I'm making, but to show that most people were passing these sewing patterns by. And I know a lot of times you guys comment that there's nothing in your stores. Now it's my feeling that my area is really rich with hard goods, a lot of vintage going on here, a lot of donations, but I feel no matter where I have traveled, I can find something to sell. I can find something to thrift. One time I went down to Florida to visit my daughter and have vacation time, and I went into a charitable mom and pop, I'm gonna call it organization, little thrift store, and came out with a wooden eagle this big, and I forgot what money that sold. I couldn't bring it on the plane, so I gave it to my daughter, Melissa, to sell, and she did. That was probably like three summers ago. But a lot of people were coming out of that thrift store empty-handed. So it's not that I have a lot of knowledge, but my mind is really open to can I make money with this? Does this sell? Because in this world, with eBay being all over the world, I feel that there's gonna be a buyer for everything, almost everything. I don't think I have found one thing that won't sell. Now, let me just say I'm a long tail seller. A lot of my items sit on a shelf for quite a while before they sell, but they bring a great price and I have the patience. All right, so today, thrift haul, hard goods, let's get going. Hit that like and subscribe button and let's see what I found. So if you guys have been noticing my voice is a little bit different, I am still battling allergies and I'm bound and determined to not take too much medicine because it makes me really drowsy when I try to take a Benadryl or something. So for now, we're just gonna go with the flow, but that's what's up with my voice and hopefully it'll be over soon. It's seasonal, so I usually get this around this time of year. All right, item number one, super excited about, knew nothing about it grabbed it off a shelf because of the quality, only to find it's a great item. And you guys, when I posted on Instagram, have given me some feedback about it. So let's look at this first item together. So right here, you can see that you don't have to know a lot about items to see the quality of this beautiful tool chest. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, heck yeah, I'll take that. So it does have a latching top part of the chest, but the interesting part to me is that this bottom drawer does not pull out unless this is unlatched. So this is a separate drawer. 
and that's what that looks like. I'm going to push it in. This is quite heavy, so it's a balancing act while I'm doing this. Hopefully I won't kill myself. And it has a separate little tray and then a deep drawer. The quality of this is just beautiful. Now this is the name. It's got a plaque on it. It is Gerstner, G-E-R-S-T-N-E-R. -E -E this one is Gerstner International. I still have some research. I'm going to put this down. It's heavy. I still have some research to do on it, but a couple of you uh, messaged me on Instagram, I think it was. Was it Instagram? Might have even been on YouTube where I showed finding it and told me that Gerstner is made in Ohio, if I remember that correctly, and that there's also Gerstner International, which was made overseas. I don't know what country. So this will bring a little bit less money. The vintage chests like this can bring well over a thousand dollars, but with how beautiful this is, I really think that I'm going to do well with it. I don't know what price point I'm going to set yet. I have not completed research to be able to set a price point, but really excited for that tool chest. And that company, I think, also sold or maybe still does kits for you to build your own. So like I said, I will do the research and then I will post it in eBay. And when it sells, I will let you know. Now, this is quite heavy and I'm really over shipping heavy big things. But for this, I'll make it an exception. Sometimes if an item will bring enough profit, then, you know, I'm willing to do the work for proper shipping. This morning, I shipped out the two Bambi, they're not really Bambi, the two vintage long leg deer statues, deer figurines. And that was quite the thing to pack because they were so fragile. But like I said, when the profit is there, it's worth it to me. So the chest I paid, they wanted $9.99 and it was Senior Citizen Monday, so I got the 15% off. So great, great find. And I'll report back on my Instagram channel, Lavender Clothesline, when this sells. All right, let's do item number two. What shall we talk about? This next thing is really simple. I picked this up more for sentimental reasons. It is a vintage Care Bears tin. I don't expect this is going to bring more than 10 or $15, but I will pick things up like this. And I think this one had a date, did it? Oh dear, they put the Roman numeral date. So MCMLXXX113. Is that 1983? I'm not doing the, the, um, <laughs> the Roman numeral conversion. I used to know it, but um, because you know my kids' names are Melissa, Lisa, and Dylan. So we took Melissa and Lisa's name and we gave them the value for what the Roman numeral was for the first letter of their name. And we used to be really good at figuring it out, but I've forgotten all of that. So I think it's 1983. And what did I pay for that? I think I paid $1.99 for that. All right. Next up, again, not real high profit. He still has his Goodwill sticker on him, $1.99. I don't do a lot of plush. I do them once in a while when I'm in the mood. This one is Mary Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R. And Mary Meyer, I think this guy's 1996. I always interrupt what I'm saying. Yes, 1996. Mary Meyer plush does well if you have the bigger teddy bears, some of the older things, some of the floppy um, stuffed animals. But he was so cute that for $2, I said, I'll take a Mary Meyer cat. Now, he might not bring more than $20 or $25, but he's not breakable. He's easy to list, super clean condition. I mean, he looks brand new. So I said yes to a little Mary Meyer kitten. Okay, next item up, I saw on the shelf, I know this brand, I grabbed it right away, thrilled to find it. I don't know who gives this stuff away, but yes, please. Okay, so Le Creuset, L-E-C-R-U-S-E-T. I think this is made in France. I hope it's made in France. It is made in USA. So why is it Le Creuset? Because I want to say Le Creuset, like it's French. So made in the USA, which I did not even know. I thought this was a European brand. And there is the, the branding here and on the pot cover. This is like an enamel coated um, iron. I don't know if this is a cast iron with an enamel coating, but that's what it looks like. And the colors are called different things. I forget what this color is called. I'll try to put it on the screen. It's something like the um, fire or something, 
I know they have a couple of different names, but I'll, I'll look it up and put it on the screen. I've forgotten it right now, which my brain is fried lately. And it does have a little bit of, I'm gonna put this down. Okay, it has a little bit of a chip on the edge. I don't think that's gonna make a big difference. And is the price still on this? Am I looking right at the price, guys? Okay, I think I paid $2.99 for it. So guess off the top of my head, total guess, I haven't looked it up, I haven't comped it, I haven't found one of these in a very long time. I'm going to say probably $45.50, if not more, so I will report back again. I love reporting back for you guys to show you what the items really bring. You know, we can all take guesses. We all can say, oh, this pot's going to bring $200, and everybody will be like, wow, but unless the item sells and we see that it sold for that much, it doesn't really mean anything in my opinion. All right. Next up is a sweet little wooden music box. Look at the graphic on this. Two little birds sitting in a tree. So sweet. And it is a music box. Watch, I'll get demonetized for playing a music box. How sweet is that? And on the bottom, there are all kinds of stickers, musical memories manufactured by the American Music Box Company, Temp, Tempe, Arizona, Temp. I'm not sure how we say that, uh, USA made. So I will look that up. I love, 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 triple love when things have the markings on them, the branding, it makes it so much easier. When something has no marks and it's a hard to describe item, it's my nemesis. It takes so long to do research, but when you find an item that's in good shape, it's sweet, you know people are gonna want it, and it has all the markings on it, it just makes my day so much nicer. So in the past, I have picked up knives, worst off, Henkels, um, who else do I look for? Chicago cutlery, just all the knife scents that we know, the, the knives that we know. And when I saw this sitting on the shelf, it was sitting this way, nice wood, nice knives, you can see right away, really well made. And then I saw the name, Emojoy, E-M-O-J-O-Y, and I'm like, what? Was that like an infomercial knife? I wasn't like a Ginsu, not quite sure. But then I ran a comp and I was pleasantly surprised to see that these knives can do really well. So I'm not saying I have one of the better sets. I'm gonna put this down so we can I can show you. Put that down so I can show you the quality of it. It is a wood knife, the handle, and it's a nice wood. So I'm gonna see what this says on it. Um, can I read that utility knife? And it just has a lot of numbers. I'm not seeing where these are made. I would imagine China, but I don't see where they're made. So I'll have to look that up. I'm such a wealth of information today, aren't I? Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Just gives the size and serial numbers. E-M-O-J-O-Y, Emojoy. Leave a comment down below if you have found this brand or if you have it in your kitchen or if you've sold this brand before. I'm dying to know, but um, yeah, so a knife block with one, two, three, four, five knives. Now the other day I found a Henkel's and I actually ditched the wood block because they're so heavy and a lot of times I'm finding people don't wanna buy them. So I could have separated it and sold the, the knife block by itself and the knives, but with the amount I'm bringing in right now, I just got rid of the block and I'm selling the knives. So I'm gonna give that a try. In the past, when I have carried just the knife blocks in my inventory, they sat for a long time, meaning over two years. And the profit wasn't worth it. Not that it's bothering me sitting on a shelf, but I was like, okay, I really don't wanna mess with the knife block. So with this, I will probably keep it together and sell it as a set. All right, next up is a wall pocket. This is a pottery piece, an art pottery piece. And this is very, I'm gonna say, 80s looking to me with the pink and the blue. It has a beautiful painted design of maybe wheat stalks. And I do well with wall pockets. I'm not sure what this one will bring. Here you can see I paid $2.99 for it in Goodwill. And the mark is a paw print, who I'm forgetting who this is. Is the name Paws? I'm gonna to have to remember what that is, slipping my mind right now. I, I, these do well, they don't sit long. I'll probably price this one somewhere around the $30 mark. All right, 
Now we're just going to talk about a few crazy things I just threw in my cart, not really high dollar items, but guys, you know me, when I'm going up and down the aisles and I'm just filling carts, I am not past putting things in my cart that are a very low buy-in dollar amount that I think will flip, that will move. I don't make a practice of doing a lot of that, but like recently I did the 50% off clothing sale and I purchased brands that I normally don't pick up because the buy-in price was so much less. So I'm always willing to have a flexible business model. Now my main rules for myself stay in place. I don't overbid at auctions. I really have to know what I'm buying when I spend a lot. But when I shop at auctions, yard sales, thrift stores, estate sales, I have a whole different set of guidelines for myself. So when I'm in thrift stores and they're having a sale and things are like 50% off, I will buy brands that I won't normally buy at full price. So these few items are just things that I pick up. I just feel like picking them up. Will I always pick them up? Probably not, but this day I did. So let's look at a couple of those and some of them I won't even know what they'll bring till they sell. All right, so the first thing I saw sitting on a shelf was a bag of coasters. And these are Ballantine Beer Watches Your Belt Line. I love that. And I'm seeing if there's an actual date on these. These are true vintage Newark, New Jersey. They were printed in. You know what? I'll open the bag. And what did I pay for them before I opened the bag? $1.99. And there's got to be, I'm going to say, 60 to 75 in the bag. So that is what it looks like. Just a cardboard coaster. But, you know, barware is so popular, and I think more and more these days people are entertaining the idea of having a full bar in their home. They, there's a lot of bar carts, and it's just a bigger thing. Now, I don't keep a bar cart in my house, but I appreciate all the barware, and I thought these were very fun. So, no date. Kind of wish they had a date, but I love the graphic. Looks like that couple's having a really good time. <laughs> so we got the round ones, and let's take a look at the square one. The square one is the cream of beer peels. So not as cute a graphic, but I said yes for the $1.99, and I'm guessing I'm gonna sell these probably for around $20. I picked up this glass dish. So this is a strawberry, it looks like an ice cream dish to me. Probably, again, not a high dollar, but look how pretty it is. I couldn't leave it on the shelf. Wavy top or scalloped edge, little pedestal. I'm going to call it an ice cream or compote dish. So I said yes to that for $1.99. I don't imagine this is going to bring more than $8 to $10, if that. I wish they had more of them. I think they're really pretty. Really pretty. <laughs> there we go. I'll just say really pretty 10 times and get it out of my system. <laughs> And number two of that type of item is a little tin tray. This is the Unisphere, and it is the World's Fair, 1964 to 65, I think, yes. So when I see something with the Unisphere logo, right away you know it's the World's Fair. And I said yes to this. As you can see, I paid, you know, I'm thinking I paid $1.99. It says 99 cents, but I don't know that Goodwill really has a 99 cent uh, price point. But I said yes to that. Okay, ready for this. <laughs> now I was just throwing things in. A little six pack of Coca-Cola. So all the bottles are there. And each one is a little student implement. So this one is the highlighter. And it looks like it's in there. They're probably all dried out. This one is paper clips. This one is colored pencils. Let's open the colored pencils. I did check a couple of these, but I thought this was so cute. Oh, and there they are. They're in there. <laughs> this is a very fun, fun little thing, all made by Coca-Cola. And I think there are so many people that collect Coca-Cola um, advertisement, memorabilia, that I thought it was a great little pickup. Let's see what the other three have. Now I, now I want to know. Um, a sharpener. And this one is very dusty. Eraser and golf pencils. Okay, so for the golfer. And the last one is a fine liner, which I imagine is so dry by now. Oh, there it is. Shall we write on something? Yeah, it's dried out. <laughs> and I'm not seeing a date on these, but I don't have my glasses on. Made in Taiwan. So figure late 80s, early 90s. All right, next up was this metal box. 
Again, guys, these few last items, these three items are not high dollar items, but I thought this was really nice. Now this box is lined with, I think this is cedar wood, and I've never seen this. So it is a tin box with a floral design. I'm not sure what this is made for. I'm guessing like cigarettes or cigars because of the wood interior. But I mean, you could keep anything in it. Oh, do I see tobacco? See, so I haven't cleaned any of this yet. It's tobacco. Good guess, Kat. <laughs> so I guess somebody kept their cigarettes. Maybe it's a cigarette box. This looks a little bit long for a cigarette box, unless they had, you know, the tipperillos or the long, the long cigarettes. But um, $3.99. I thought this was really good, and I knew it was vintage. Okay, so we will do a few more. The next plate, when I saw it sitting on the shelf, I knew that this was Judy Miller. You can put a comp in for Judy Miller plates. I imagine she makes other things. I know this brand for the plates and I've picked these plates up before. Now mine is not especially good, but still I think this will bring a strong $30. That's what the back looks like. They're always signed, Judy Miller. The ones I've seen have always been signed and I paid $1.99. Now, Judy Miller Studio Art, the plates that I have seen that have brought really good money usually have a couple on them, like a, like a couple sitting at a table having coffee. That's my memory of them. I haven't looked this up yet. I haven't run comps or looked this up, but I knew when I saw Judy Miller that I've picked it up before. Sometimes I can't remember what an item brings, but in my mind, I'll think, Oh, I've sold that before and I feel that positive like pick it up because I've I've picked up like I don't know 20 or 30,000 items so when you get to that level sometimes you get knowledge and sometimes it all becomes a big blur so Judy Miller yes 1983 and this is just an animals I don't know that these are named I guess they are barnyard animals I'm gonna name it barnyard animals I'm making that up but I said yes to this I think these are nice and they're collected Quite often when I am in the thrift store and I see bags of things sitting on a shelf, unless it's pure junk, I go ahead and take them. For me, it's kind of like a fun pastime to buy bags of things if I spy one or two things that the bag is worth buying. And then it's fun to open it. So this one I have not opened, as you can tell, and there's a price on it of $2.99. I'm not sure who decided that this stuff was worth $2.99, but I'm going to open it now, and we're going to do like a little, a little uh, surprise gift bag opening. So it seems like most of the things are metal, but we shall see. Ooh, hope that wasn't too loud. Okay, so the first thing, beautiful, are these dresser knobs or cabinet knobs. Beautiful design. These are vintage. One, two, let's see how many we have. Oh, good, we have more. Three and four. I think I have four of these for in the bag. That's a great pickup. Right there, I've made my money back and profit. So everything else is just gravy. I really like these knobs. I wonder what they came off of because the stem of the knob is quite big and they still have their screw and their washer. And do they have a marking? No marking. I wonder how old these are though. It's like a hollow and this is like a casing over the, the base of it. I don't know if that's going to pick up or not. So I got four of those. The next item, oh, this is so good. I love a good bag, <laughs> is a bird and his tail is a bottle opener. Oh, I really like this. Again, is it made, it says made in China. Okay, so maybe it's not as old as I think, but I think that's really good. Very happy with that. I also got um, two brass owls. So there they are. And they're just hollow on the bottom, so I don't know that they have any purpose. They're not salt and pepper shakers. Maybe they just sit on a shelf. I really like them. And the last thing are four black wooden knobs that look like they have been overpainted. And I might just throw these in as a gift for the person, not a gift, but you know, as an extra for the person who buys the other knobs in case they can use them. So they are wooden because I don't imagine these would sell on their own. Yeah, just a simple wooden knob. 
Okay, so great little bag for $2.99. Very happy with those items, and I really like those knobs. So that was a fun, a fun thing. You know, when my kids were, okay, we're going down a rabbit hole. Ready? Taking you with me. When my kids were younger, and we would go on vacation as a family in the summer. We always went to Vermont. We did a lot of antiquing, a lot of auctions and yard sales and flea markets. Oh, the flea markets in Vermont are just so good. And we'd give the kids money at the beginning of the week so that they had their own money to spend. And, you know, we do the whole, do you really want that? It's gonna use your money. You know, just teaching them to use their money. And there was one store downtown in Wilmington, Vermont. That was the town we'd come into just to hang out and go into all the little shops. And this store was like a country general store and they had this old chest and the chest was filled with paper bags that it was like a mystery thing that you would buy. It was like a grab bag. And for a dollar, you could buy these paper bags. And it was so fun to see the kids decide how much money they were gonna spend on these mystery bags. And then outside we'd get ice cream and sit on a lawn somewhere in a park or whatever, and they would open their bags. Always a good memory. And that's what those bags remind me of when I see them sitting on a shelf. It's kind of like, I wonder what all of this stuff is. I could stand there in the thrift store and you know really look at what I'm buying, but for $2.99 and seeing a few things that I think it's gonna be worth it. Always great fun. So there's that rabbit hole. Okay, and the last item I'm gonna end with was sitting on the shelf in this box. This is Jim Shore. I have bought Jim Shore items before. And this one's called Hooray for Spring Trio of Chicks. I paid $5 for it. Now Jim Shore, if you don't know those items, can bring crazy high money again. I have seen, not in person, the nativity i think it's a large angel it's something like four feet big and the angel's skirt is like open and the whole nativity is inside the skirt just beautiful brings thousands of dollars jim shore also does like halloween haunted houses um, disney jim shore does a lot of disney christmas houses so you want to run a comp on jim shore items they can bring really good money i don't know what the spring the welcome spring was that what that was called um what did I say this was called? I've forgotten already. Hooray for spring. I don't know that a hooray for spring brings a lot up and I'm just noticing that the chick's arm is broken. Boo. So I should have checked this more carefully in the store. I don't see the arm in the bag, so this will just have to be thrown out. I won't re-donate this. I don't think it's fair to put this back in the box and re-donate it and maybe have somebody else spend their money on it. So Goodwill, $5, another $5 down the drain. Lately, I have been picking up quite a bit, shouldn't say quite a bit, out of every 100 items, I probably pick up, I'm gonna say four or five damage to where I can't resell them and it's so sweet and i'm so sorry the chick's wing is broken but anyway we'll get this out of it showing what jim shore items look like and once again i wish goodwill will bring back the return if it's damaged policy but so far they haven't and i have written to the <laughs> the director of goodwill um, I've written him a couple of letters. I actually met him and he had given me his business card. Big mistake because now I email him to say, hey, this is what's going on. You know, it's not fair that we, we spend our hard earned money and there's no return policy. Now I am fine with Goodwill having a return policy where you can only exchange for credit. Totally good because I spend, I gotta spend over 15,000 in Goodwill every year. So I would be fine with receiving a credit, but to sell items that I mean, I should have checked it, so I'll take responsibility for it. Totally my fault. I can't expect them to catch every defect. All right, so we're ending on that womp womp note, but it's always good to see items and learn about different brands. Hope everybody is doing well. Hit that like and subscribe button. I am just trying to build my channel higher and higher, and I appreciate you guys. Go out and get what's yours.